Sorry, I'm okay. From Palm Springs, <laughs> California, it's the Suzanne Summer Show. <laughs> and here you she sound, is. You sound like a guy who's been doing that for a while. Well, I haven't done it for a long and time. And it's the Alan Campbell and Suzanne Summer Show. Okay, so I know we're a couple minutes late, but it's like living in a zoo here. The um, bighorn sheep. You know Caroline? Hi, Caroline. Hello. God, you look hot. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, Damn. That's because it's hot. <laughs> it's so we? It's so hot. Thank you. You know the uh, lace room down below this room? And there's a stone wall, right? Well, the bighorn sheep have now decided that's the bighorn sheep highway. And they walk across there in front of the bedroom window there to get over to the stairs to walk up the stairs to the funicular. So I just had to stop and watch it. I couldn't help myself. It was so crazy. Wow. I know. Anyway, top of the morning to you. Happy Friday, everyone. Stepping into Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, what are you doing this weekend, Caroline? Well, um, we're having a friend over tonight. Um, our friend Chelsea, who's our amazing yoga teacher. Uh -huh. We've seen her since through all of quarantine. Um, and we are watching Mulan. What's that? So we're, Mulan is the big Disney movie. Oh, that's, right. Yeah, so we, I mean, that's one of my favorite princess movies. Yeah. The animated one. And so today, the live action one launches. So we're that and make Chinese food. Fun, is that on Netflix? No, it's on Disney. It's on the Disney Channel. So they were supposed, it was supposed to be a big theatrical release, um, but they kept postponing it, so they've decided to do it. It's like a pay-per-view thing, so you have to join Disney. You have to, you have to basically get the Disney Plus channel and then upgrade to premium, and then you can watch it. But it's such an amazing story. Al. Al. Yeah. Al. Yeah. Do we have Disney? Of course. Yeah. You do? Disney? Is we, this Al Lion? We do Disney. I, I think we have everything. I mean, I just I don't know what to get, so I just said get everything. So. So do I need that? This would be great entertainment for you. This is she's okay. like you. She takes on China and she she conquers like she's such an inspiring woman. Oh. You just I had a, um, a very interesting interview that I did yesterday for a, uh, a magazine called High Atlantic. Was that the name again? No, 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 no. You're confusing it with another magazine. Oh. It's nothing to do with us. Julie, write me what, what magazine that is that I did yesterday. But anyway, um, something, something So like while that. you're thinking. Huh? There are people that probably jump in because they want to know what the deal is today, oh, tell them what the deal and then they're you know okay. waiting to go somewhere for Labor Day weekend. So here's the deal. Okay. Okay. Labor Day weekend sale, twenty five percent off everything, and the promo code is uh, L A B O R twenty five at SuzanneSummers.com. I want to show you these were L's uh, toenails. Yeah. Right? I love that. Wisteria. But we've changed his color. Yeah. Al, yeah. let's see your toes. Okay, you know what I, I have to do? I see that color here. How could that be? Um, well, because they sent you all the summer colors, and Alan, because he's Alan, picked peacock, which is a fall color. Oh. Are you going to put your foot up here? No. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. What? No. No, that makes me nervous. Yeah. No, I want when um, we can't do it. Okay, you know what? I can do it. We have, we all got a pedicure yesterday and I really needed it. Well, hey, Alan, listen, all you have to do is tilt the phone down and. Yeah, but then. What, what, yeah, we don't have to do it. No, no, what I'm going to do is I have to take the phone out in order to do this. Okay. So do we want to see Madam's feet as well? Well, this is a summer color that I'm You can just tip the whole tripod. You don't have to take it out. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can do it. You can do it, Al. I know. There it is. But dang, like, why would you take the camera off of her? I love those toes. There's, that's, this is, uh, can you hold this next to it? This is called Poppy. Oh, you have Poppy? I thought it was Papaya. Uh, Papaya. Did you put corn <laughs> Poppy or Papaya? No, it's, it's Papaya. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Sorry. They're pretty similar. The, the coral poppy is just a little brighter. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you with your cute sandals. Oh, okay. No, you match my so now the pièce de résistance. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Can they see? It's kind of dark. Yeah. So this is a fall color, huh? Well, we launched it in the fall, but it looks great. Yeah, it does. It does. Look at you. Okay. Yeah, I actually, I'm actually going to put this on my wall. Yeah. Because I love the color. Yeah. 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 We, when we set up this huge production, uh -huh. okay, we had to buy two lights. They were yeah. each 200 bucks. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Then I bought uh, so a couple of microphones online. Mm -hmm. That was $58. We're up to like... Uh, $458. Okay, wow. yeah. Wow. And since that time, we you know picked up a couple of extra lights. So we're you know we're committed. Okay, we're committed. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway. Well, for, those of, for those of you who don't know, Suzanne's nail polish is ten toxin free. Yeah. She doesn't just bring you normal nail polish. Yeah. She took out ten of the worst offenders, and it's on twenty five percent off. It. But it's all weekend long. The sale goes through Monday, Labor Day. So uh, also. If you're ever thinking about one of those, you get 25% off today, which is a great deal. You know, it, I'd buy two of them. So I started to tell you about this interview I did yesterday, and I, Julie's going to call you, um, uh, Caroline, and uh, or email you the name of the interview I did yesterday. I, I, so Julie, if you can do that as, as soon as possible, because I... I loved, I loved this editor, and we had such a good time together. And she asked me about the thigh master, and it made me start thinking, she said, why the thigh master? It made me start thinking about, you know, I love to pass on themes to you, that sometimes the worst things that happen to you are the, are the motivator and the best things that happen to you. And she said, why the thigh master and how the thigh master? And I said, well, the thigh master actually came about uh, from one of the worst events of my life, and that was being fired from Fleece Company. And I've talked about that before because I loved, I loved that show, and I loved being on that show, and I loved creating Chrissy Snow. And um, right before, you know, you have to understand, I'm going to tell a little story about me and Bruce, Caroline's husband. Bruce, my little boy. And it was you and me against the world. It really was. If he's listening, he will nod his head. And um, it, what I love about Bruce is that he always says, I never knew we were poor, Bob. And uh, our life was rich in that we had nothing, nothing. And I, I didn't have any financial support from anywhere. I didn't have uh, a job. I, didn't, I wasn't educated. I didn't... Um, all the things that you think would be real negatives, and um, they all turned out to be positives in my life. So by the time, there's such an incredible story that leads up to um, uh, my getting the part on Three's Company. And I don't know if you want to hear that whole now, Do you know what we should do? <clears throat> what? We're going to find out the name of this interview you did. Yeah, she's called. And, and we'll mention she's it here. At leisure, okay. Yes, yes. And, the, and then and, they, yes. they get the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll post it when it's at yeah. leisure. We'll oh, post it. Okay, okay. So that sort of sounds Atlantic. <laughs> 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 anyway, 
a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, she asked me that, you know, that question that really got me thinking about um, being fired. And it was so unfair. It really was unfair. But, you know, when unfair things happen to you or negative things happen to you, you can sit and feel sorry for yourself or you can say to yourself, how do I make this work for me? How can I grow from this? How can I learn spiritually and emotionally? And, um, and then you leave yourself open because life is a journey you cannot plan. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And after... Um, at, the night before, we were going in to renegotiate for Three's company. And the reason he was renegotiating was because when I signed on for Three's company, I just signed anything. I didn't care. Uh, they want me to do it for free? I'll do it for free. I want this job so bad, I don't care. And who knew it was going to turn out to be the number one show in America? Who knew that my demographics, I don't even know what demographics meant, were going to be you know, of the highest of all women on television at that time? But right before we went, so, so in year six, it was time to renegotiate. I signed a six-year contract, which nobody does. And I did, uh, or five-year, sorry. And um, I didn't have a lawyer uh, when I signed on it. I I I where do I sign? I just signed it. Um, and you would have too. It was the greatest job. And then they give me this job. And the original Chrissy Snow that I read, I thought, oh, she's dumb and unlikable. And everybody dislikes a, a, a true dumb blonde. They have me like, oh, like that. And I thought, how do I create a dumb blonde who is likable and lovable and that you care about? And I succeeded. She was. You loved her. She made you feel good. She, um, she had great, great morals. Great moral, moral code. She... she uh, would never tell a lie, would never steal your husband or boyfriend. She always did the right thing. If you, re if you remember, write in things that you remember about Chrissy Snow, because she was near and dear to my heart. So you can imagine, the night before the renegotiation, my husband gets a call from this guy in New York uh, at, the, um, uh, at the CFO's office, the uh, finance office, and he said, you didn't hear this from me, but they're going to hang a nun in the marketplace, and it's going to be Suzanne. And so Alan says that to me, and I went, no, no, we're renegotiating. We're not going in for the kill. I just don't think it's right that all the men are making 10 to 15 times more than I was making, and that um, uh, I, I want more than them. I just want to be paid commensurate. Was, you know, John Ritter was incredible. Was, was he 15 times better than me? Were any of the men on television at that time 15 times better? And so I was the first one, the first feminist, but sometimes I say the packaging was so wrong. It had to be Chrissy Snow, <laughs> who, who was the first feminist. So when Alan, we lived in a multi-story house on the Venice Beach at that time, and when he left for the lawyer's office at ABC the next morning, he stops and uncharacteristically looks back at me and he says, you know, this could all blow out of the water. And I said, no, it's a, it's a negotiation. We say what we want. Um, uh, they come back with what they want to offer. Then we counter back and forth, and we meet somewhere in the middle, and you come home, and everybody's happy, and, and they're happy. Now you know how, how Chrissy Snow negotiates. <laughs> so I'm waiting in our beach house, and at that time there were no cell phones. Imagine, no cell phones. And uh, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, and it's becoming intense. And what I hadn't realized was that Laverne and Shirley had renegotiated a month or two before me, and they gave ABC, as I call it, a colonic. And uh, so ABC said amongst themselves, and it was all men, we can't let this happen again. So the next big female star on our network who wants to be paid what the men are being paid, um, we're going to make an example of them. Lucky me. Bad thing, right? I'm getting to the thigh master. I haven't lost my train of thought. So um, Alan s stands at the front door as he's leaving that morning, and as I said, uncharacteristically, he said, you know, this could all blow out of the water. And I said, no, it's, you know, it's a negotiation. 
So I'm waiting at home, waiting, 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 waiting. And there's a way the front door opens when it's good news. And then there's a way the front door opens when it's bad news. You'll know the difference. So the front door opens. <laughs> like and I'm upstairs going, oh. Obviously the door needed some grease. Three and one oil. Yeah. And now we don't have any money, right? But now you know how the story is. And then uh, it closes. And then I hear. There's a way you walk up the stairs when you got good news, and there's a way you walk up the stairs when you have bad news. So I met him at the landing. And he looks at me. And he said, You're out. I said, I'm out? What do you mean I'm out? He said, You were fired when I walked in the door. No. You mean. I, I mean, what do you mean I'm out? I mean, I don't go back to work anymore. Said, you don't go back to work anymore. I said, if you want to get paid for the rest of the season, um, then you got to show up for a minute a week. Remember that? Yeah, you know what? The, the, the packaging was wrong. Okay. To be the first feminist. You were the first feminist. Okay, so the packaging was totally wrong. They thought they were dealing with Chrissy. But aside from that, the fact that it was the parent company of the network that made the decision. It wasn't the network. The network, the president was uh, Tony Thomopoulos and you know he worked for the parent company. And the producers on Three's Company uh, had sort of a narrow vision of, of uh, you know, what to do with the show. And well, so they all went for it. But also, this is so bizarre. Um, and it's because I'm too honest and so you know, I walk in the very first day that I'm on the show, and this was five years before this, and I said, I just have to tell you all, I've never had an acting lesson, but I did get the lead <laughs> in Guys and Dolls in the high school musical, and I played the part, excuse me, of Adelaide, and I was really good at it. In fact, I was so good at it that I got a scholarship to college. What was that college called? Uh, San Francisco College for Women. Oh. And yeah, it was the wrong choice. I mean, why would I go to a Catholic girls' college? But anyway, anyway. Because you were a fallen Catholic. <laughs> I wasn't yet. So um, the the uh, the last night of that musical in high school, I'm getting to the thigh master because the thigh master is my payoff. Um, the the uh, uh, last night this guy shows up and everybody seemed to know who he was and everybody was really excited about his being here and I didn't know who he was and he walks in and evidently he had like a, 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 a uniform he wore which was a, a, a beige trench coat and a beige pork pie hat and he popped like this out of the side of his mouth and he had a radio show and at that time when he had a radio show it was really popular and he would start a show by saying this is Walter Winchell and evidently, Walter Winchell what, had the biggest radio show in America. And he walks past the audience. He walks right up on stage. He walks right up to me. And he looks at me and he says, you're going someplace, sister. Well, well, what an opportunity. I'm getting to the Thigh Master. And um, so I, I get to, um, to the college. Now I've got a scholarship, uh, but I, um, and Daisy, my granddaughter, asked me this recently. She said, wait, 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 are you telling me that you lost your virginity and got pregnant all in the same night? And I went, yeah. So I- well, you, were, you were multitasking. <laughs> I got pregnant in the first few months when I was in college and I had to leave school because I'm at a Catholic girls school and you can't stay in school if you're growing a belly. And, well, uh, certainly not at that school. Not at that school. And so um, I lost that opportunity. I'm getting to the thigh master. So, uh, and then I, you know, at that time you had to get married and I married Bruce's father and I should have married him. We were, we, we dated in high school. We weren't in love. We didn't even know what love was. And 
he was a really nice guy, and, and but uh, you know, I always feel badly about the fact that I needed to look around a little more before I was going to settle down. And so um, I was the first person in my hometown to get a divorce. And to get pregnant out of wedlock. Yeah, and I was the first person in our family to get a divorce. And there was a lot of shame. Remember when uh, those things were just like so shameful. And um, so now I'm a single mother. It's me and Caroline's husband, my little boy Bruce. But you know what? I've never understood, you know, everyone does this. Okay? I know. Not, well, maybe not everyone. I know. But, you know, the fact that you have to be married, this was the case there. It was then. a different time. Those were different times. But even, different to, time. even today, Let even me today. Get to the thigh master. I'm going to get to the thigh master. Oh, okay. okay. All right. And then you can, like, go. Oh, no. Because, okay. of course, you see it from that perspective, and, and so do I today. So, um... I had to, I had to scrape together a living. I mean, literally, I had no money, no money. That's why when I did my one-woman Broadway show, it was called The Blonde and the Thunderbird, because uh, when I got the part of The Blonde and the Thunderbird in American Graffiti, I um, uh, didn't have enough money for the toll to get across the Golden Gate Bridge. And um, I was on my way for an interview that I didn't think was very important for a movie called American Graffiti. And American Graffiti was uh, being directed by some guy by the name of George Lucas, right? I know the editor is listening to this because she told me this whole story yesterday, but I hadn't thought about this story in so long, and I'm looking at the Thigh Master. And, um, uh, I, you know, I walk in and I see all these beautiful girls at the at the audition for American Graffiti. And I thought, oh, they're all so much prettier than me, and I'll never get it. And so I said to Gino, the casting agent, I said, um, I can't stay. They're all so much prettier than me. And I know this is just, you know, look out the window of a, a '57 T-Bird, and I, I can't stay. I can't afford the parking. And he didn't realize that I had left a lipstick as collateral at the toll, uh, with the toll guy at the Golden Gate Bridge. And he said, well, you know, George Lucas really liked your picture. Let me go see if he wants to see you early. And I thought, whoever George Lucas is. And um, I then see Gino, the casting guy, do this. I went, well, okay. And so I went in, and there's George Lucas. And he's not a very big man. Uh, but, and he was slumped down in his chair, so really all I was looking at was his head was right here, and then there was a the desk. He was kind of slumped down like that. And he said, can you drive? And I said, uh-huh. He said, okay, thank you very much. I thought, okay. So I get in the car, and I'm driving home, and I thought, thank you very much. My gosh, I'm glad I didn't stay, and I'm glad I didn't get a ticket, and I'm glad I... I had to leave, you know, one of my only tubes of lipstick, but I did make note to myself, you know, uh, lipsticks can come in handy when you have to go across the bridge. They will take something as collateral, which I didn't realize. So that was something I learned. I'm getting to the thigh master. I'm getting to the thigh master. <laughs> I'm getting there. Because um, it reminded me, I, I went off like this on her yesterday, too, because it reminded me of this whole story. The negative things in life can turn out to be the best things in life. So I get home. And it's not true that the best things in life are free. No. No, I had to leave my lipstick. There you go. And so I get home. I walk in the front door, and the phone's ringing. And it's my kind of agent who's never shown any attention towards me at all. She goes, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, you got it. And I said, got what? She said, the part, what part? I've already forgotten I'd been on this audition. I didn't even know it was a part. I didn't know anything. Can you drive? Yeah, I can drive. And so um, she said, American Graffiti. I went, oh, oh, okay. She's, don't you know what this is? I said, no, I don't. She said, well, it's kind of what the movie's about. I said, what do you mean what the movie's about? She said, well, the whole night, this, this group, Richard Dreyfuss, Candy Clark, Cindy Williams, Ron Howard, Harrison Ford, um, this this whole group is looking for the mysterious blonde of the Thunderbird, and I had no idea that it was anything because this agent was so disinterested in me. Here's how she called me for the interview. She goes, 
4.30 tomorrow afternoon, um, you, you don't, uh, um, uh, you show up at such and such address, it's, uh, the pay is $136.72 and you don't need any talent. She hung up. Well, she was only making 13 bucks. <laughs> right. So, doesn't need any talent and can you drive? I guess you don't need any talent to drive. So, um, get to the Thigh Master now. So now, now I, I am discovered by Johnny Carson in the commissary at NBC. He and I, because I, had, I just wanted to see Alan Hamill. I didn't, I didn't like, uh, I, I wasn't trying to be an actress. I wasn't trying to be anything. I was trying to make some money. I was just trying to marry Alan Hamill, who wouldn't marry me for 10 years. And nine, nine years. Nine years, okay. And thank God, because I wasn't ready, and he wasn't either. No, I mean, it was the perfect time to marry you, because uh, you got the gig on Three's Company. I thought, okay, she's going to have some money coming in, because <laughs> I'd been paying all the bills up until that time, okay? Well, we hadn't been living together all that time. We had been. Not all that time, no. But, no. No, I was still living in Sausalito. And I, yeah, but let then me you finish my story because I got to get to the thigh master. Then okay. you can tell any okay. part of the story you want. Okay. They All are right. going to yell at you if you don't let me finish okay. the story. And so um, I uh, uh, now I lost my train of thought. So now I am negative, getting fired, getting yeah. So I got so I got. Thank you very much. I totally lost my train of thought. So I got. Fired and you're out and uh, the greatest gig I ever had in my whole life and I love being Chrissy Snow and I made everybody like a dumb blonde and, and nobody likes a dumb blonde and it's so unfair and, and everything and so then I now I'm scrambling for work again because I'm considered trouble because I, I wanted to be paid what they're paying the men and um, I uh, needed work and so one day, this woman shows up at Now We're Married and at our house with this thing, except it wasn't called a thigh master. Actually, it was, actually it was a man. He, 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 had a high, Marie. he had a high voice. Pardon me? Amber, Amber no, Marie no, no, she didn't come. Oh, yeah, the guy came. That's right, the guy came. The first. guy came, yeah. And it's called a V-toner. Yeah, boring, and it was boring. gray. It was gray. It, and it was gray. And, and the woman who invented it was a Swedish doctor. Anne Marie. So it looks Swedish. It was Swedish. Swedish. Yeah. And she was showing how you can use upper right body. Upper body. And by the way, it's a great upper body workout. Great for over your head. I use it. I can. I can. Between your legs. Yeah, I can lay in bed and I can do a head to toe workout, laying in bed <laughs> with the thigh master. And you do. And, you do. and so um, then the byline we we called it a thigh master. We, we fight over, not really fight, over who named it. I think we both named it at the same time. And then the byline was you just put it between your knees and squeeze. So, um, so just, just so you know, uh -huh. Christine Marcato Felice said, Al, don't interrupt. <laughs> so I can't uh, help it. So we make a commercial. But what's the commercial going to be? And so I'm in my dressing room. And you know, uh, I was the first person on television, woman, who recognized the benefit of nude shoes with a perfect pointy toe, right, and the perfect amount of toe cleavage, and just the right height heel. And Chrissy Snow, she wore high heels. She wore nude shoes. But this is how it started. I'm getting to the time master. Um, the the um, shoes were $500 and, and something. And I put them on, and I'm in my bra number pants. And I thought, oh, Alan's going to think I'm so stupid for spending over $500 on a pair of perfectly plain nude shoes. Oh my gosh. So I put the shoes on, and I walk out of my dressing room into his, and I'm in my bra number pants, and I said, how do you like my new shoes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he went, great legs. And I went, oh gosh, that's the commercial. He goes, what, what? He goes, when we do the Thigh Master commercial, you can pan the, the camera up my legs from these shoes all the way up my body and, and 
You can be off camera saying, say it. Nice legs. You're great. You said great. Great legs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after we sold 10 million Thigh Masters, um, I wasn't so sad about being fired. By the way. <laughs> that was a long story yeah. to get up oh, yeah. to yeah. the Thigh Master, and sometimes the negative things in your life, you can turn them into positives. Yep. We use this like to using forward energy to win, and this catapulted me to another whole place. Who was doing the uh, commercials for us? Johnny Carson would do... Um, uh, Jokes, Jay Leno. Jay Leno did the Thighmaster orange juice squeezer. He put the orange here and did that. Right. And the comedians all sold the Thighmaster for us. And it was also on either 11 or 12 feature movies at Universal. Yeah. Uh, what's and I've lost track of all the sitcoms it was on. Yeah, pretty much. Actually, you know, the first time that yeah. we wanted to introduce it on television, yeah. Uh, you were doing a late night show on ABC by that disc jockey in LA. Can't remember. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah, remember yeah. his name. Nice guy. Yeah. Okay? Um, oh, yeah. Okay, he had just started the show. Right. It was on 11 30 every right. night opposite Carson. So we went down to the studio and I brought uh, uh, two thigh masters. And I gave one to him and I gave one to you and I said, You guys can have fun with this. And he said, Oh, this is great. And all of a sudden, a guy wearing a suit came down from up above, who uh, was in the commercial department. He said, "If you're going to do this on this show, you got to you got to buy a commercial. Commercial time." I said, "It's a gag. We're going to have fun with it." He said, "Are you selling it?" I said, "Of course." He said, "You got to pay." So he leaves, and I'm thinking, "I don't know about this because this could be fun." Mm -hmm. So what I did was I put it into a shopping both both in a shopping sack. And I put it behind the chair where you were sitting, and I told the host, I, I wish I could remember his name, he was such a it's nice... It's coming to me. Yeah. I, I told him, it. I said, there's a bag behind Suzanne that had the two thigh masters in it, and this was a live show to the East. Yeah. Okay, so they, they couldn't say, don't do it. Yeah. So in the middle of the show, he mentions this, you reach behind, you pull up the bag, you hand it the thigh, and that was the introduction. Yeah, yeah. And that was the introduction, and... Um, from that point on, we didn't even know what we were doing because we never marketed anything. Yeah, but it was, by accident, pretty brilliant marketing. It, it, it well, was, we, did a lot of, we did a lot of promotion because it was a fun thing to promote. And we got to write off the shoes. <laughs> so the $500 shoes didn't really cost him anything. That's right. And, um, uh, and then uh, Manolo Botic, Called in New York, they called them the Suzanne shoe. <laughs> so I just thought you'd find that very interesting. And it was that lovely lady. I had such a wonderful conversation with her yesterday. And uh, if you're there, uh, let me know. Okay. Anyway, did now. you find that interesting? That was interesting. Now. There's more to the story. One time I'll tell you the story about Johnny Cars. I won't do because Alan's heard it so many times. He literally just rolled his eyeballs. You haven't heard it anywhere. But just a moment. <laughs> just a moment. <laughs> Are they? And you have some of your regular friends who have heard this story and are enjoying hearing it again okay. because you're so charming. Okay, great. Yeah, now I know that you say... Uh, but you do have some people, Alan, we had someone say, geez, can we see the deal? So exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, right. here it is. Okay. I was just about to do that. This is the deal. It's a great one. Labor Day weekend sale, 25% off. Promo code LABOR, L-A-B-O-R. In Canada, that's L-A-B-O-U-R. But you spell it this way if you're calling from Canada. <laughs> LABOR25 at SuzanneSummers.com. Cha-cha-cha. Yeah. So the, the moral of the story is... There's a moral? Yeah. You know, one of the nice things about being 73 is that... You're 73? Yeah. It's acquired wisdom. And you... Wisdom is the one thing that no young person can buy or have. Think about that, all of you who are around my age. You know the other thing that young, young people can't get? What? When they're young? What? Is hair growing out of their nose. Well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. You yeah. know, I find aging is interesting because you grow hair where you don't want it and you lose hair where you do want it. <laughs> It's nature's little trick, okay? <laughs> yeah. You think you're so smart. 
<laughs> That's funny. Well, it is the 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 um, the benefit of aging is wisdom, and you see things differently, don't you? Um, it's and, and perspective. Perspective is that you know you can kind of float overhead everything and see it from a different angle. And when you look at life, the life you are living from here down, you have what I call aha moments. Aha! Oh yeah, I get that. So. Um, do, did I miss being Chrissy Snow? Oh yeah, oh yeah. When he told me I was out, I could actually, you could probably tell, I just started welling up a little bit again myself. Um, that delicious character, that um, it was so fun to morph into her. I would uh, go out, as soon as I put the hair in, with the, the two ponytails, you know, I mean, already, Look at the difference. <laughs> the, yeah, look at your eyes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, a lot of couples put on costumes. You know, that's when they go away for the weekend. Yeah, Patrick and I used that's to. That's right. Sometimes I go away for the weekend with Chrissy Snow. <laughs> okay. So top of the morning to you. Okay, top of the morning. To my beautiful wife. Who I've been with for 52 years. 52 years. 52? 52. I thought it was 50, but it wasn't well, it was 51. 50, it was 52 years and it was 52. Do it. <laughs> and I'm thrilled to be with her. She's great. And she has supported me financially. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 I was thinking. I was thinking. I like how you refer to her. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Yeah, she. Don't knock my chair over. No. Don't. This is an incredible chair. I know, but don't knock it over because okay. it's a little wobbly, as Leslie Griffith says. We, we ordered uh, we ordered this chair to look at it because for our new house. For our new house. Oh, I was wondering why yeah. it's, 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 it's nice. It's great. Why is it wide? It's amazing what they sell online for the, what, nothing. I don't know how much a chair costs, but it was like, I don't know, nothing. Okay, I'm so nervous you're going to knock this chair over. I promise that I'm holding it right here. Yeah, it's walking. You can't go anywhere. Caroline! Okay. <laughs> I get nervous. After we fell on the stairs two Fridays ago, I'm just a little, a little... Did you call me? PTSD. Yeah, I, I do. Do you want me to prepare a little treat for you here? Um, no, I don't feel like eating anything right this moment. Oh, okay. I will uh, make one for you. Okay, no, no, we've got a little bit of cheese. Okay, and, and truffle honey. Organo truffle honey. Organo. Organo. And organo. We're going to yeah, truffle right. honey. Yeah, have you been drinking? Yeah. Oh. Of course I'm drinking. Yeah. What do you think this is? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. This is a double. Oh, because, yeah, because you are like... You know what it's Friday? Probably. It's Labor Day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always thought growing up, I always thought Labor Day was for a woman about to have a baby. When they said Labor Stupid. Day, I go, that didn't sound smart. <laughs> Labor Day. I remember when my first child was born, I went to this, the, it was a woman's hospital. That's and called I, Leslie, your and first I, child. What is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's Leslie, my first child. Mm -hmm. She's now, what is she, 93. She's yeah. 93. Watching Leslie, you like that? And, <laughs> and I went to the, the, it was a woman's hospital. And I said, I'd like to be in the delivery room. I'd like to be there when it happens. And they treated me like I was some kind of perv. I'm not well, kidding. They watch wouldn't let me in. That. And then he said, well, if we do it in a room where we show operations, you can sit in the gallery and look down through the glass. And I thought, this is uh, it's my baby coming. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Anyway, I remember I took the elevator up to the third floor of this women's hospital in Toronto. And the door opened. I heard women screaming about their rotten husbands who had done <laughs> this to them. <laughs> Were they like, really? Absolutely. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I have to go back to my job. Yeah. I'm Suzanne, an indentured servant. I do everything she wants me to do, and that's why we get along. It okay? is. We wake up in the morning, I say I'm sorry. And then at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I hit her again with yes. I'm sorry. Okay? You're a little clumsy. Oh. This is the most critical she's ever been. I know, okay. because I, I, I've been drinking water. I've only had a sip of tequila, and you've had, uh, well, one, but it's, uh -huh. you know, yeah. 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 Okay. That's a cool glass. Okay. I'm going back.
back to where you put it. Yes. And you'll come back again because you look awfully cute today. Did you like our pink and black outfits the other day? Do you know that was a total accident? We didn't plan that. I came out of my dressing room again in my pink dress and I grabbed my black hat and I walk over to uh, where he was and he's wearing a pink shirt and his black shorts and he looked really cute. So anyway, uh, that was my little bit of philosophy today about sometimes we don't understand the things that happen to us in life and why and life is a journey that you can't plan and you have to follow the flow of, of the journey and um, know that if you don't try to interfere with that flow, uh, that it's going to take you to the right place. Well, you got to take chances. And you got to take chances. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one I'd raise. Al is drinking a little tipsy. <laughs> I always know because he talks a lot. <laughs> the woman who wrote this is Mary, are you ready? O'Neill. Oh, one of mine. Who probably knows a lot about drinking. Yeah, well, it's an Irish thing, right, Mary O'Neill? We have we have the gene, don't we? I wrote I wrote um, I've written what three books about alcoholism? I don't know. You've written twenty seven books and yeah. fourteen New York Times bestsellers. Yeah. And twenty five or thirty what, million what books. A privilege. What a privilege. So I um, didn't get the education that I wanted, but that's okay, because I was self-educated. And we women don't learn how to be mothers. We just know how to be mothers. We just follow the flow of your feelings. But I, I never knew how to be a father, I, you know. And I'd read those books by psychologists yeah. you know, who were single. Who you know were promoting their ideas about how to be you know of a good father or a good mother, and you know the reality is, I think as long as you love your children, you're giving them ninety percent of what's right. Yeah. And the other ten percent can be screwed up, but so what? But the love thing, you know, uh, hangs on, and after a while, you really do get to be an expert with children. I mean, think about it. We got to the point where we saw our children, who some of whom were hanging out with uh, other kids who were driving around, you know, with BMWs, and our kids didn't have that. And that's we 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 made that rule: if you save half the money mm -hmm. when you want a car, we'll put up the other half of the money, mm -hmm. and we will send you to any school you want to go to as long as you're serious. But the day you drop out or you graduate your uh, allowance, which was very, very minimal, yeah, decreases by one twelfth every month. And you know what? It worked. And the other great thing we did with our kids, we forced them to work. Well, we, our kids aren't kids anymore. No, no, they're not I kids. Mean, Bruce is, what, four years from being 60? How mm -hmm. old is Bruce? He's 55. 55, okay, five years from being That's 60. That's right. That means you're... Well, he, but he's still, they're still, they're still our kids. Yeah. What do we yeah. call them? He's well, actually 54. He turns 55 in November. Yeah. And then the oh, other two right. are older than Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. I have to tell you, it was pretty weird to have kids who are in their 50s. Yeah. Okay. And because it's hard to, there's a place where you got to back off from relating to them as parents who have wisdom and who are trying to uh, uh, trying to share their wisdom with their young kids who just don't give a shit, okay? And uh, so you have to back off and you have to let, let, the, let them live their own life. And that's yeah. what we've done. They're living yeah. their own life. Well, I, that's, that's what you hope. Yeah. You, um, like Bruce and Caroline just moved into this beautiful new house. We did a show from there uh, almost a week or so ago. And I was talking to Bruce today and I said, I, I can't tell you, I, I think about the two of you in that beautiful house and I'm so happy for you and that um, you made this all happen by yourselves and, and um, it's that journey. I'm sure you two didn't plan, you know, that you'd be living in the Hollywood Hills in this beautiful house, but there you are, right? And it's an exciting chapter. Yeah. Yeah. I, wow, it's wonderful. Yeah, 
It is. Great new chapter. And for us as parents, it's wonderful. Because um, I, I love thinking about you being there. I am waiting for a dinner invitation to be there. <laughs> and whenever you can, you just tell me. Yeah, you know, I know. Whenever I know. you're. I know that. Whenever you're nearby, dinner is made for you. Yeah. I, I knew I could finagle a dinner invitation from you last Sunday night. I knew I could finagle that. And, but then I got that great invite. It's not about a better invite, it's just that I love, can you straighten that out because that glass is. What's that? It's, it's just sitting uneven, uneven on that thing. This? There. Yeah, yeah. Yes. How's that? Okay. <laughs> you can't imagine what we go through every night in our house with the lights. With my fracture hip because... Light, no, no, with lights. Oh, the lights. Yeah. Yeah, with the lights, okay? I'm, in, you know, in days of old, there used to be a guy that uh, before uh, there were lights, they had gas lights in the streets, and a guy would go around lighting the gas lights in the street. I <laughs> mean, old gas lighter. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> well, this hey, I have some people who are jumping in asking about your nail polish. Do you mind if I just do a little rundown on yeah. why Suzanne's nail polish is so great? Actually, actually, Caroline, did we send you that stool we took of our four feet with the nail polish? Yeah, I posted it. Oh, okay. Stupid. I posted it for the tune in. Okay. You know, you want to know why? Have you have seen, seen it? it? Thank you. Who has? And there were some comments that said no bunions. No, no bunions. No, because he's now having regular pedicures. Well, I've only had two. Well, that's regular. Okay. For you. I, the last pedicure I had was in 1964 in Tokyo. A pedicure is the most luxurious thing. And for the longest time, you never had a pedicure because most men don't, didn't, and don't. But. And you never liked anyone touching your feet. No, I couldn't. I, I couldn't allow anyone to touch so my feet. I remember I was sleeping one day and Bruce came and tickled my feet. And I, I, this, I did this during the... the and you pulled out a gun. Between, <laughs> no, it's another story. I, I did this between the time I woke up and the time... Not that it okay. Bruce. And I, my, my leg reacted and I kicked him and I think he went halfway across the room. And that was the last time you tickled my food, right, Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> when, you know, okay, so Suzanne's nail polish is 10 toxin-free, meaning that it's free of the top 10 toxins used in conventional nail polish. So it doesn't have the biggest offenders like formaldehyde. Yeah, you can even stop uh, with formaldehyde. Yeah, DBT, it doesn't have formaldehyde, resin, camphor, um, TPHP, xylene, there's And here's the promo code labor25. Thanks, Al. So, I have on. By the way, you look really incredible. I do? Doesn't yeah, she? I mean, Jesus. I mean, you're 73 years old, okay? Really. Thank you. You certainly look at you, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Wow. That's, that, you're like hot shit, no kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> he's for any age. Well, it's not great. Well, thank you. Yeah. That's so nice. And I get to see her naked later. <laughs> <laughs> you just make it creepy, Al. I know. Creepy. I'm creepy and I don't care. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I'm her creepy. Have... I'm her creepy. And he's 84. That's right. I, and he's pretty so, cool. He's so... No, I, mean, I, I I'm used to it now. The, you know, weird-ass family. I'm used to it. Yeah, it's a weird-ass family. Um, I, I find that you get better as you get older. I find that uh, I I love looking at you. We're supposed to Thank be you. together. I know. We're supposed to be I together. Know. Do you want to know about my fingernails? I don't have long fingernails because uh, I I do dishes. Because you do gardening and you do dishes, do dishes and you make and the I, bed. I, I know. And I then you've got I have the a housekeeper here and I have 
And you got the power, the power ready. scrubber. <laughs> I have a power scrubber. Do you know what a power scrubber is? Uh, any of you who are my age, you remember Betty Furness. Remember who she is? I can hear you going, yes! And Betty Furness would clean with things like this. And she always had her hands on her hip and she always had a, a, a like the right kind of apron on. And so my power scrubber is sort of my ode to uh, Betty Furness. And yeah, I, and there was another woman named Betsy Palmer. Yeah, that, that she, that's your... No, I, I, I actually look, I used to look at her and think, what? if I have to lose my virginity, I'd like it to be with Betsy Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it never happened. Everybody's Googling uh, Betsy Palmer right now. Right. Right. And Betty Furness. Anyway, um, I, I only, in fact, my manicurist, I asked her if she had the, the color that Alan has on. She goes, yeah, a lot of colors. And she said, it's all I use. Uh, this is uh, Lori here who comes to the house. And um, she takes out a big, big Ziploc bag. And there are all our colors. No, nobody else, I didn't see anybody else's colors there. So, so Diane Martin said, awesome. yeah. in caps, yeah. Al, you're slurring. Please stop interrupting. <laughs> OK, I oh, promise. I won't interrupt. You know, when you do well, that. Yeah, I won't interrupt. Okay. I know I like it. No, really, honestly. Okay. Who was that? That was Betty. That was no. Who was that? That was uh, that was uh, Joanne De Claudio. Oh, okay. No, no, that wasn't Joanne. That was not. I'm sorry, Joanne. Where is that thing? I just read. I can't remember. Where are they? It's hard to find this stuff. Here. I know because people say you don't answer, and because it goes by so fast. Well, anyway. But don't not answer. I can tell you exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 hot. Anyway, wasn't it nice that I got fired and I ended up making so much more money? How, how what's the temperature? 111 right now. 111. This and the is sun the, has just gone down. This is the current temperature, 111. And the sun went down. And then we get out, uh, we go out the back door of our bedroom and we take the golf cart path all the way down the hill like this, and then we take the golf cart all the way up here to the kitchen. It's kind of faster sometimes than going down the stairs. And um, I get out there in the golf cart, it's hot, it's really hot, and Al forgets his phone. What? And he goes inside, and he can't remember where he plugged it in to charge it. And I'm sitting out there, and sweatlets are dripping down, and. You know when the sweatlets are dripping You know, but I know, but you look, you look great with sweat, okay? No, really. There's something great about you sweating. Here's okay? your creepy father-in-law and your okay. creepy boss. Not creepy. No. I love this party. As long as it's not saying it to me. No. I can handle this. We, no. we, we figured this dynamic out. Yes. Yeah. No. That, so Pamela, Ka pa Pamela Capullo's... Coon said. He does. He does. What? Pamela Capulos Coons uh -huh. said, reacting to people that tell me to shut up. Uh -huh. So keep effing interrupting. Best show. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> You're with me, Pamela. I find Al so charming. I hope you all realize when he does this, it's just all part of what I love about Al. Al is Al. I love Al. I should do a show called I Love Al. Anyway, I... I think you do, three times a week. I do. I do. Yeah. And then during the off days, I tell them them, too. I just love telling stories of uh, how negatives can turn into positives, and they always will. They always will. And so that's the Thigh Master story. There's so many more stories, and I didn't realize until I was doing that interview yesterday how this connects to that, that connects to that, that connects to that. Well, how about telling the story about our first date, where you gave me a pot brownie? It's a lie. It is? Or as Caroline calls these, tall tales. Okay. Right, Caroline? Tall tales. Tall tales. Yeah. Tall tales, tall tales. Yeah, tall tales. And, and no, you gave me the pot brownie. Oh, I knew it was one of us. Yeah, okay. right, yeah. right. Okay. I never, I, I never was uh, interested in drugs or intrigued by drugs well, at it, all. It, I never considered, you know, pot in the 60s a drug. Well... And, and that day when I walked into KGO TV and um, I saw him, and I write about this in uh, uh, Eating Secrets, and I also write about it in Two's Company. <laughs> well, you, the, when you meet someone and the day you meet them, you know you're going to marry that person no matter how much... Uh, That's right. You called your mother that day and said, I met the man I'm going to marry. Yeah. And then when you told me, uh, I started feeling pressure. But it took nine years, okay? Yeah. And then when you finally got a job, I said, okay, let's get no, married. No, you didn't. Okay. Yeah. You didn't. Yeah. Well, I, but I did think, and I don't know if this is nice of me or not, I did think that you were wealthy when oh. we got together. Mary Merrick says, Al, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you. <laughs> that's what my wife well, thinks, too. That's the greatest kind of that's right. a-hole. Yeah. I've never sworn on camera. I've always liked that word, you know? What word, Al? Asshole. Yeah. yeah. Well, we all have one. Yeah, well, not physically. Not, you yeah. know, talking about... How would you like to live through life without one? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Talk about inflammation. Phew. <laughs> 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 so keep talking. I have to go and get another... Okay, go get one. Okay, I'll do it. You know what? Give me your glasses. Yeah. You go get your drink. And so I just These glasses? Oh, no. Why are you wearing those? I don't know. That, the others aren't here. No. Okay, well, these are, these are the no. Costco $3. No, no, put them on. They'll look great on you. Everything looks your great. glasses right over there. I know, but these are three pair. These are three. Here, take all these glasses. No. They're all from Costco. <laughs> They're all from Costco. Oh my God. Okay, they cost three dollars each. No. Have fun, whichever no, one you want to wear. I'm not wearing any of these. <laughs> I bought fourteen pairs of really cute glasses, and how did you end up with these uglinesses? I don't know. That's why when he was leaning against the chair, I went, "Oh, that could be dangerous." Um, I know him so well. It's all right. But the, did you know we fell? We fell. I fell about a month ago. That was bad because I had the fractured hip. No, we fell. But there are two falls, and I took both of them. Well, and you, then you had another fall besides the one. The one you? before when I called you at night and remember I oh. fell in the bathroom. Oh, oh, that one. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. We and weren't even drinking either. No. I wasn't drinking the night we fell here either That's at all. True. I didn't no. even have a sip. So I'm... We, I may have been. We, uh, no, you weren't. We came no, I wasn't. out our bedroom door. The problem, you said to me, why would you leave this house, this beautiful house? It's beautiful. I can't believe, sometimes I wake up in the morning here and I think, wow, I don't know what I did, but gosh, thank you God for allowing us to live in this gorgeous home for 43 years. And so I'm waiting out at the top step outside our bedroom door. And um, well, 
how many stairs would you think that is down to the bottom? Oh, well, it depends where you leave from. But yeah, it, about it could. Yeah. No. To go from uh, our bedroom down to the parking mm -hmm. is easily a hundred and, I don't know, something. Yeah. Those, no, that's the fountain. We're just talking down here. Steps to the down fountain. to the gate. The, we're right in front of the fountain. Doesn't everyone have a fountain? I don't know. And so um, I'm waiting for him. It's five o'clock, and we're not meeting all of you at five o'clock for our nightly cocktail. So we, when, when we're not with you, we do the same thing. We have a cocktail together. So I'm waiting for him. I've got my crutch. I'm all I'm, I'm ready and waiting and looking forward to our nightly date. See, it's not the drink so much. It's the ritual. I was talking to Bruce about that today, Carol, about the ritual that you two are having a drink most nights now, too. And it's the ritual. It's the anticipation of but want a date. That's what Alan always says to me, want a date. Or I'll say, it's five o'clock. So it's like, it's the ritual. And I'm waiting out there and I'm excited because I'm looking forward to this nightly date that we have. And um, he comes out, the door closes. And one of the beautiful things about this house is we were very young when we were putting it all together. And um, we did beautiful things like leave rocks uh, like uh, ensconced in the, I'm going to show the nail polish, uh, Caroline. Um, Actually, if he shows a closer to camera while you talk, that's, that's, that's exactly. Now, here are. Okay, here's, here's, the, the, here's the deal. Here are four pairs Promo of code super labor super 25, 25% off. We here can see. Till, I guess, Monday uh, midnight. The glasses. What's the, oh, the glasses, yeah. okay. You choose your, oh, oh it's okay, they're three bucks. So um, I'm waiting for him. He comes out. We built the rock at the top of right outside our bedroom door is so beautiful that we built a stair around it. And it looks beautiful so that when you come out the door, the rocks and the stairs are all kind of built together. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I'm waiting. And he's on the same top stair as me. And, but his foot is on that rock. And uh, he loses his footing. That's why I was nervous about the chair. And uh, he fell and reflexively, and any of us would have done this, and uh, he grabs onto me, so he falls down. I was already holding your hand. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Were you? You were holding my yeah, hand? Yeah, we always, when we walk down the steps, oh, I always hold your hand. Oh, that's why I was waiting for you. Yeah, I was waiting yeah. for you to hold my hand down. And uh, I, it was like in slow motion for me, and I, my hip was just starting to get better and I felt myself, I fell down on top of him and my head hit the rock, his finger hit the rock, his finger, blood went everywhere. I have, I had like, I didn't need stitches so it could have been that bad but it like clunk, you can hear it and um, uh, blood was everywhere, everywhere and I went down on top of him and uh, I haven't even been out there since because I don't want to see more blood. Did you say you went down on top of me? I did. Okay, just wondered. You're so bad. So. Hey, two falls and you aren't even living in South Dakota. And I don't so Stacy yeah. Lawrence says, Al, wondering if anyone recognizes you at Costco. And the answer. Al, can you hold some nail polish up to camera while you're selling us? Oh, certainly. So okay. Read so this is, uh, this is Camellia. Okay, there we are. Okay, and this is, uh, what is this? Coral Poppy. Mm -hmm. Coral Poppy. That's favorite. Yeah. Okay. I love that one. This is, uh, what is this? That was cereal? Cornflower Blue. That's, that's a nice, I like that one. I think I painted my you toes out. Yeah, you've yeah. been cornflower blue. Okay. This one is, you say, you say tomatoes. tomatoes. Yeah. Okay. That's, okay. Uh, that's, uh, this is... If you, if hold it, hold it. I'm in the middle of my I pitch know, here, let okay? Let me say about this red. Because okay. I I, red doesn't look good on me. It's got to be just the right red. This, has, this is like a, a, like a... Tomato red. Yeah, 
Yeah, but it's got a lot of orange in it. Blood red. For those of you... Yeah. Orange red. Yeah, there's another red we have here that is too red for me, but it's a great red if you've got Caroline skin. Okay. Okay, and here's my favorite. Yeah. It's called Get Naked. Yeah, I know I'm creepy. Okay, I'm <laughs> creepy. So, big deal. Mm -hmm. This is Peachy Cream. Okay, peachy cream. And your manicures can mix any of these nudie, nakedy colors together. And yeah. This one is... The peachy cream is one of Suzanne's um, shears. It's a sheer color, so if you like that really natural look, it just has just a hint of peach in it. I love it. Okay, this is Repair Restore Base Coat. Oh, this is important for those of you who may have been taking off your gel nails and your nail beds are all screwed up and thin. This is a Choose that once more because uh, no matter what color you get tonight, I highly recommend you get that too. Okay, this is the Repair Restore Base Coat. Yeah, yeah, that's, I've got it on and I don't have, I don't wear gel so I don't have that issue but it just makes my nails stronger. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Okay, this was one you were holding up. But... And there's, uh, this one is melon or melon. That's not, it's a nice color. I like yeah, it. I think, I think that'll be the, the next time I get a pedicure. This that one. would look good on you because you yeah. have, that looks good, great with tan yeah, feet. I have you know, tan my sister feet. always says you can tell a rich guy because yeah. he has tan feet. Except for mine. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and this, that? what is this? This is. Flamingo. I think all our colors are so pretty. Okay. Yeah, and then... This is... Uh, oh, I've had... This was the last time I had it on my feet. Yeah, we took it off yesterday. Jacarenda. Yeah. Or in Spanish, Jacarenda. Oh, okay. Jacarenda. Okay. I love this one. This reminds me of the Tiffany box. They're so pretty. The um, colors just make me happy. I know. And this, you can go to the web page and you'll see all the colors. But the, these are the This ones. is pool. Like a swimming pool. Or a cesspool. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. He's behaving pretty well, Caroline. Okay. He's doing great tonight. Yeah. Okay, this is hibiscus. I love that one. It's another man in that palette. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe yeah. we have all these colors. What is this? This is. This no. Really? This is Cerise. As in okay. Our French family. The... So that's more of a me red. Yeah. That is. That looks great that on you. Yeah. Our French family, the the father in the French family, has a they had a cherry tree there. And I couldn't believe there was a cherry tree. And I'm a fruitaholic. And cherries. I'm eating cherries. And he came out and, and said to me in French that if I keep eating cherries, what did he say? Don't get the gas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. That's right. You were there. Yeah. That's yeah. right. What is this? This is. First summer size. That's right. This is papaya. 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 Yeah. Okay. And finally. And by the way, this is what I have on the papaya. So we'll show you my feet again. Okay. And finally, we have tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. It seems like we're doing a marathon here tonight. How long have we been on? We've actually, you've, you've done it. You've actually gone over an hour. Really? I don't feel really? like going away. I know, but we had so much fun. I know. So how long? Uh, by the way, thank you both for these beautiful, beautiful gardenias that you sent for our anniversary. It's Monday. And happy anniversary. Um, I wanted you to get them today so that you could enjoy them this whole holiday I, weekend. It's and, so sweet that you do that. Mm. It's so sweet. So Marlene Pedro said, Creepy Al is on his A game. <laughs> Love it. Creepy. Keep it keep it yeah, up, cool. Big Al. Al. And I have to tell you, Marlene, you probably know this, but you know, aging, you think about keeping it up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so people were upset that I interrupted your Costco story, but we really needed to see those colors before we wrapped. 
Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The reality is, I was, I was, I w actually, I was recognized by the guy at the seafood counter in Costco because I, for like, I don't know how many years, I did commercials for a national, uh, a national, uh, what was it, food market chain, right? Yeah, yeah, Alpha Beta. Alpha Beta, yeah. Alpha beta, yeah. And also in, in the East, it was, uh, what was it? Acme. Acme. Acme, right. yeah. Right. And then we've got this great nail polish remover. And um, tell them about it, Caroline. Well, it, it's a much better formula because it's not as harsh on your nails. It yeah, mine never get dry or anything. Yeah, so it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have that sticky, nasty smell. And um, it's just more gentle, but it gets the job done. Like, I, again, I thought, oh, it's going to be hard. It doesn't have any acetone in it. I thought it was going to be hard to um, get the nail polish off, but it works great. Yes. So, you know, it's just a reminder, Suzanne, that we're so used to using chemicals that you show us another way to do it, and we didn't know there was another way because we just only knew that you just go to the drugstore and you buy that cheap That's bottle stuff. of That's stuff. That's the C, I know. But, you show us that there's another way to do it. So, and it has a geranium flower scent, and it's not acetone; it's acetate, but it, it works. So I always, I always great. make her do the color on these things because she remembers everything, and uh, and I don't. So there you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, and also, I hear that we sold out because we started talking about these two days ago: hair, skin, and nails. But yeah, don't show it. People are just going to be mad. Where will we get more? When will we get more? Uh, about four weeks. Four weeks. Can they pre-order? Yeah. Nope. Oh. That's why I say we'll just oh. we'll, we'll do a big show right. when it comes back. It's we will bring, bring this back because you one know, of the things I'm proud of is that I have uh, good hair. And at 73, it's hard to have good hair. It gets stringy and it gets dried. It breaks and mine doesn't. Do you remember that we were at a party one night in Malibu and that woman, I won't mention her name, but she was... Uh, a, a major TV star lifted your hair and said something about what do they call those things mm. uh, that you put on that yes you know, she was being so bitchy she's you bitchy know, yeah she's an actor so yeah. I won't say her name but she goes I'm just being a good girlfriend and hiding all your extensions right and you know I'm not going to stand there and go I don't have extensions so I said thanks <laughs> Okay, so, so we, have, we have Anna Thomas, Anna Thomas saying, stop with that old horn sound. And then we have Terry Ost Bow saying, I love Al's trumpet. Can't please them all. By the way, you know, the, 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 I love, there's the, the first color TV show ever in the history of the world was, and I'll give you a hint. I know, I think it was. I'll give you a hint, okay? okay? This was every time this star would make an appearance on the show, you would hear in the background. What was the name of that show? Dinah Shore. <laughs> okay. What was it? It was Robin Hood. Oh, oh, oh. And it was an, I think it was an English was that the production. It was an English production. They did wow, it on. Yeah, I think oh. they did it on film, and it was amazing to see green on your TV screen. Yeah. There are people going, "What? What's he talking about?" Of course, we see green on and the TV. And also, screen. I remember um, Ed Sullivan was in color. Also, you know, you don't know this, but I was on the Ed Sullivan show. I didn't know. I don't know this. I was. Tell me about it. Ed Sullivan did a show from Toronto when I was still working there. And uh, yeah, I think it was the only show he ever did from Toronto because Wayne and Schuster was a Canadian comedy team that he liked having on the show. And he hired me to be the announcer. So if you pull up the Ed Sullivan show from Toronto, Canada with Wayne and Schuster, you'll hear, it's the Ed Sullivan. <laughs> Just like you say, it's the Suzanne Summer show. That's right. I was looking at... Uh, I have to say one thing before you guys wrap up. Uh-huh. Suzanne, but her name isn't spelled right, and they're telling you that you're winning money or something like that, please 
please ignore it or report it. Um, it's not her. Yeah, it's her. yeah. Yeah, the, but one, it, the one thing I wouldn't do is spell my name wrong. Yeah, but if, you know, if you want to send some money, okay, we're okay with that. Here's yeah, the here's the them, yeah. here's the offer. Labor Day. I'm sorry to cover your face. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Okay, Labor Day weekend sale, twenty five percent off. The promo code is Labor L A B O R twenty five. SuzanneSummers dot com. Okay. Have a wonderful Labor Day you know weekend. What we're having for dinner tonight? No. We're having artichokes. Oh, you know what? For, I, I've never liked artichokes. It's a pain in the butt. You go through those leaves and you get a little oh, thing and thing, and I finally get to the I get to the heart and I like the heart. Okay, but the we've been having artichokes for the last three nights. They're good. I don't know why. And it's the same dinner we had last night, but we liked it so much. You know, yeah. When it's this hot outside, the last thing you want is a heavy. A heavy meal and so we've been having our big heavy meal like uh, this great um, chili Colorado that Caroline uh, made for as a surprise the other day which you all saw and um, so at dinner we've been eating very light and what did you just do I just showed uh, our, our friends here the temperature oh, of Palm Springs. Right. Yeah, it's hot. It's 111. And so you want to eat real light here and I happen to like it. we'll go in the pool after dinner. So for dinner tonight, we're having artichokes that have just been lightly steamed and the inside scooped out so you don't have to do any work. And I put Meyer lemon olive oil, our Meyer lemon olive oil, and extra lemon, a little bit, and sea salt. So good. It's so simple. So good. Um, and then sliced papaya with um, lemon squeeze on it and uh, prosciutto. Yeah. That's yeah. a good dinner. Yeah. Sounds yeah. great. And then you have toenails to match. We have toenails to match. And papaya toenails and papaya for toenails. Ah, that's right. I didn't even think about that. That's right. Yeah. Well, I had fun. Did you all have fun? This was a fun I show. Yeah, I had fun. Yeah. I always had Remind fun. Remind me the next show to tell you my Johnny Carson story. You'll like it. Okay? Yeah, but jo I know. You said Johnny Carson discovered you, okay? Who was the first person to put you on TV? Uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Say it a little louder. Alan Hamill. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. I paid you for it, right? No, you got paid. You got paid. Man Trap, you got paid. You were one of the panelists on Man Trap wearing the, the Superman shirt and the hot pants. Okay. Did I get paid? <laughs> yeah, of course you got paid. Okay. And then, The That's Sensuous right. Man, you got paid on The Sensuous Man, right? You were the props person and the yeah. resident and poet. And you got... next time we all get together, ask me about The Sensuous Man. <laughs> You'll like it. Good okay. night, everybody. Good night. Wonderful good night. Nice weekend. Night. Have a good dinner, Caroline. Bye-bye. And I love you, Caroline. I and love give, you too. give Bruce a big kiss for me. I will. Okay.